For me growing up, movies and photos would mostly have all been shot on film, including my own family photo albums. And this constant exposure to the subtle and not so subtle characteristics that film contains has definitely had an effect on how I respond to it now, in other people's work, but also my own. I started getting into taking still images about 11 years ago, and as I learned about different elements of photography, the tools themselves, through to lighting, the film look was always something I had experimented with and tried to implement in my work. I used tools like Visco to create looks that felt more pleasing and closer to film, looks I wouldn't necessarily have been able to create on my own. But these images still felt very much digital the majority of the time. Eventually, I just started shooting film itself, and what I'd always wanted my photos to feel like started coming through. Even if you know what a certain film stock generally looks like, the process of taking the photo, having it developed, processing it, and finally seeing the finished image can still give you that sense of surprise and accomplishment, or even disappointment. When we took a look at Dehancer for video in a previous upload, we didn't make any comparisons between actual motion picture film and digital video, as this can be a costly process. However, Dehancer have since released a photo version of Dehancer Film, which works as a plugin for Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Capture One, and Affinity Photo, so comparisons here are a little more accessible. Most of the controls and settings in the still image version of Dehancer are the same as the video version. We'll go through an overview of these here, but there's also a detailed technical explanation of each of these settings in my previous video on Dehancer. We've opened a digital image shot in RAW with a Nikon D800. We can access the emulations for all of our film stocks on the left hand side, with a small preview thumbnail for each stock. Dehancer offer motion picture emulation here too, which is a nice option to have if you're looking to create photos with the feeling of motion picture film stock. But here, let's go for some Kodak Gold 200, which I've always found to be a nice looking film that suits a variety of situations. Sometimes it's hard to see much change to the image in Dehancer when a film stock is selected, as we need to make other corrections to fix exposure, bring out the colours, and add the subtle touches that really make the image feel like film. Dehancer gives us the option to emulate the push-pull exposure process during film development, which affects contrast and colour on negative film, and exposure on positive film. Since we've shot digitally, this isn't something we need to do if we're under or overexposed. Instead, it can be used as a creative tool. In our main adjustments, we've got options to tweak temperature and tint, and also defringe to ease off on any chromatic aberrations you might have in your image. Expand helps us to set our black and white points which works in tandem with our print medium section. Here, we can select the medium our film is printed to. Dehancer emulates an analog development process, which means the only way to see our developed photo is a print made with an optical printer or enlarger. Developed negatives need to be printed to a photographic paper. In this case, Dehancer bases its print emulation primarily on Kodak Endura Premier Glossy Paper but we also have options to use Kodak 2383 or Fuji 3513 print film if we're working with motion picture stock. Cineon film log so that we can emulate the motion picture printing process outside of Dehancer if need be. And linear, which removes the contrast and subtle characteristics of photographic paper. Since we're working with Kodak Gold 200 and negative film stock, we're going to print the Kodak Endura paper. Now it's worth mentioning that it's not always vital to work this accurately. After all, experimentation with mediums is how we create new looks based on tried and tested practices. But for now, we're going to stick to the usual printing process. Exposure and tonal contrast are both based on analog processes and how these values interact with each other. 
Generally, when grading with these tools, you'll be working on balancing them along with the black and white points to get the contrast and exposure you want in the image. Checking analog range limiter gives us a different set of black and white point values as measured on the film prints referenced for the emulation process, essentially giving you more gentle clipping points in the highlights and shadows and making for a softer, more film-like look. Colour density saturates specific colours in the image, rather than a blanket saturation across all hues. Saturation, which is automatically set to 100, allows you to desaturate the entire image uniformly. Dehancer doesn't let you saturate too much in the plugin itself. As mentioned in one of their guides, it's easy to degrade the aesthetics of the image through oversaturation. If you want more saturation, you can always add it after you've finished with the Dehancer plugin. Colorhead is a digital recreation of color enlargers or printer lights, which use color filtration to correct color casts on a print. Dehancer recreates this in an accessible way using sliders, which we can use to correct the colors in our image or to creatively implement different looks. Grain is one of the most important tools when it comes to the film emulation process. Instead of a standard grain overlay, Dehancer actually reinterprets your image with a replication of film emulsion. This means the image itself is now constructed entirely of grain, with areas of colour and brightness dictating how and where this grain occurs. This is inherent to film. Grain is actually silver crystals on the film's emulsion, which form the image on the negative when exposed to light. So having grain emulated to this degree of accuracy massively helps toward our image feeling like film. We have tools to increase the size of our grain, a larger size corresponding to a film with a higher light sensitivity, or ISO. The amount of grain corresponds to how we want to convey the exposure of our image, or the density of the film. An underexposed image will usually be much grainier when we try to recover detail, for example. Resolution allows you to soften up the initial sharpness of your digital image, with 100 retaining that original sharpness, and 50 being a balance between detail and your current grain settings. The smallest detail on real film can't exceed the grain size, so a setting of 100 is generally going to be unrealistic. I personally like a very low resolution here. We can adjust the amount of grain individually between shadows, midtones, and highlights, giving us more control over the distribution of grain in our image. Color increases or decreases the saturation of colored grain in the image which can vary between film stocks. Now halation is an effect you see more often on motion picture film stock, usually appearing as a red or orange toned halo around higher contrast areas of an image. You often see it around sky, windows, lamps, and strong reflections. Although both motion picture and photographic films usually have an anti-halation layer, Motion picture cameras don't have the same protective black plates as a still photography camera, so light bounces back onto the negative, causing the effect of halation. Still photography cameras prevent this from happening to quite the same extent, due to the internal components of the camera being anodized and painted black. Dehancer gives us a bunch of options and parameters to control exactly where and how this halation appears in the image. Bloom is an effect we see caused by imperfections in lens design and presents as a dispersion of light around bright areas in the image next to contrasting darker areas. Dehancer emulates the effect of Bloom not as an overall adjustment, like using a diffusion filter, but the way Bloom looks when these lens imperfections are exposed to film emulsion and how film grain amplifies this effect. Similar to halation, we have options to fine tune and control exactly how this Bloom appears in our image. Vignette is exactly what you'd expect 
and can be used as a creative tool to provide a subtle focus when it fits the image. You can see how we've gone from a digital looking image to a filmic one, and the subtle details we implemented, making for a more accurate representation of the colour and characteristics of a negative film stock. So what if we want to compare Dehancer's film emulation to actual film? This is actually a bit of a loaded question. While certain film stocks have certain characteristics, the entire process of exposing to a negative, getting it developed, scanned, processed, printed, or even how it's viewed, can lead to many variables in the way the final image can look. So a comparison here is interesting, and we are going to make one. But it's important to understand that the ways in which you get to your final image when shooting film can often vary slightly, which might sound unreliable and inaccurate, but it's also part of the reason why shooting film is such a rewarding process. Let's take a look at some comparisons. We're going to shoot portraits on a couple of different types of 35mm film, Kodak Portra 400 and Kodak Gold 200 and also two types of 120mm film, Kodak Portra 400 and Fuji 400H Pro. Patrons have access to this extended video. Alongside the film photos, we're also going to take some digital ones on a Nikon D800. Let's switch to the Nikon F80 and take the same portrait with the same exposure settings and same lens on some Portra 400. We sent our exposed negatives to our preferred film lab for processing and got them back through post. And we're going to be scanning our negatives using an Epson B600 scanner. We'll use two pieces of software for this, Silverfast for scanning the negative and Negative Lab Pro to convert our negative to a positive and edit the digitized image. In this instance, we're using Silverfast to simply preview and scan in our negative once we've checked focus and got a good idea of what the image looks like, we'll revert it back to a negative and scan it through as a RAW file. This RAW file can then be imported to Lightroom, where we'll prepare it for conversion in Negative Lab Pro. We'll then use Negative Lab Pro to convert our negative to a positive. You can already see the difference between Silverfast's conversion and Negative Lab Pro's conversion. Although we could have tweaked the colours in Silverfast, Negative Lab Pro gives us a much more natural feeling interpretation of the negative. We'll change our tones to linear so we have a more neutral base to edit from. And what's great about this plugin is the option to use a LUT on your film scan. Remember how Dehancer uses Kodak Injura paper as a print emulation? Well here in Negative Lab Pro, we can use Fuji Crystal Archive paper as a print emulation, labelled on our LUT list as Crystal. So we're following a similar process as we were in Dehancer, but this time with an actual film scan. From here, we can tweak the contrast and exposure slightly on our scan. We'll remove the dust and do a little touch up later. Now let's import our digital photo and run it through Dehancer. Dehancer recommends some settings be changed initially before opening the Dehancer plugin. And we're also going to tweak our white balance a little, so we're in relatively the same place as we would have been on our film photo, which was shot with daylight balanced film. Now we've got our photo open in Dehancer, we'll select the same film stock we shot our film photo on, Portra 400. Now it's just a case of getting our photo to where we want it, using the exposure, colour and film emulation tools we discussed earlier. Back in Lightroom, we'll make a few more targeted adjustments just to tweak a few things. 
I preferred the lighter look of the film scan, so a few exposure adjustments. A small boost in vibrancy to add some more subtle saturation. And some targeted colour adjustments to make the reds a little less magenta and further saturate the blues very slightly. Let's open it side by side with our film scan in Photoshop and do a quick touch up on both images. I was actually quite surprised by how similar we got these looking as I barely referenced the film scan when I was editing the digital image, mainly just adjusting and tweaking exposure and colour from memory. There are definitely differences. Some of the colour tones vary, and we may have added a bit too much grain to our digital emulation, but overall, these are variations that could have happened at any point during the film development process. We scanned our negative with a particular scanner, and interpreted it through a particular workflow. Whereas Dehancer emulates its own analogue process of enlargement and optical printing. Perhaps if we'd processed our negative in the way Dehancer has emulated, we'd have had an exact match. But I don't think that's the point. In a straight comparison, you might be able to guess which is the film version, but if someone showed me the Dehancer emulation on its own, and without prior knowledge, told me it was shot on film, I wouldn't argue, it feels like film, and I think that's the point. We also shot some Kodak Gold 200, alongside some digital. We'll process our negative in the same way as we did previously, previewing and scanning with Silverfast, and converting with Negative Lab Pro, using the Fuji Crystal Archive paper LUT. And for the digital image, we'll run it through Dehancer, selecting Kodak Gold 200 as our film stock, and editing exposure and colour to where we want it. Plus a few tweaks in Lightroom. I do find further saturation of the skin tones necessary here, depending on the image. Side by side, we have two different interpretations of Kodak Gold 200, one through a negative scanning process, and one through an emulation of the optical printing process from a negative. This combined with our own choices in exposure and colour make for some differences, but they're actually a lot closer than you think which we can see with just a couple of tweaks. The highlights in our film shot are brighter, whilst retaining a soft clipping point, so let's push the highlights up in our digital image and soften them down slightly. Our skin is a little pink, and blues on the coat a little too saturated in the digital image, compared to the more natural looking skin tones and less saturated, more magenta tones of the coat in the film shot. This is probably because we pushed the colour density up so high in Dehancer, so let's fix that too. There's still some colour differences in the sky, but if we were told these were both film scans from the same shoot, there wouldn't really be too much reason to believe otherwise. And this is how you can tell how accurate Dehancer is at its own emulation process. Even though we went in blind when emulating the Kodak Gold film stock using Dehancer, not really referencing our film scan, and just creating the image we wanted, we were still able to pretty much match it back to the film scan with just a few simple adjustments. This would have been a much more complicated process if we hadn't had an accurate Kodak Gold 200 emulation to begin with. And that's even if we want this comparison in the first place. Dehancer have heaps of research, guides, and FAQs detailing film characteristics and the process of film emulation on their website. So if we revert our changes back to Dehancer's optical printing emulation of the film stock, maybe with that blue tone down just a little, I'm happy knowing that this is based on an accurate emulation of that process, and therefore a valid emulation of the film stock. As mentioned earlier, 
there are many variables to film development and how the final image looks. And when it comes to film emulation and even film scanning, those variables combined with the control you have over the final image will always contribute to that final look. This is why emulating film can be a difficult subject to tackle. Dehancer have also just released a version of their film emulation tools for iPhone. We get all the same tools as the Lightroom version on the iPhone app, so we're able to edit our photos in exactly the same way. We can select our film stock and push and pull the stock. Make changes to our black and white points. Select a print profile emulation and change our exposure and contrast. And, like the Lightroom version, we can jump back and forth between exposure and black and white points to get where we need to be with our image. Analog Range Limiter also features here, giving us the gentler clipping points of the referenced film prints. And we can also tweak the colour density for a more subtle saturation. We've once again got Colour Head, allowing us to emulate the colour correction process when using colour enlargers or printer lights. And Film Grain, which features all the same tools as the Windows and Mac plugin. We also have both halation with all the detailed adjustments we can implement. And blue, again with all the subtle parameters we can adjust. I've never been much of a cell phone photographer. If I want to take photos, I usually take a camera with me. But after visiting family and walking around a nice little seaside town in the south of the UK, I feel like I've been swayed toward using an iPhone to capture things more often, mainly down to how well Dehancer's iOS app works in conjunction with the phone and its camera's capabilities. Walking around, snapping shots, and editing them with Dehancer almost feels like an actual digital replacement for a point-and-shoot film camera. It's very creatively satisfying to be able to take a photo with your phone, edit it with your phone, and have a photo that feels like it was shot on film. To a purist, this might sound like cheating, or not a valid process, but I absolutely love these results. And if it saves money due to lack of having to buy film and having that film processed, that's a bonus. I think Dehancer are once again doing a fantastic job at providing us with the tools to easily and accurately emulate film and film processing techniques. Film is imperfect and rough around the edges. It's very congruent to the way our mind might process a memory or a dream. And I personally think this is why it feels a little more magic, like something you can't quite grasp, yet feels very familiar. And I think it's great that we have the option to create this feeling in an accessible way. You can get 10% off of Dehancer when you use my code, Rob Ellis. Support my channel on Patreon and get extra lighting and shoot breakdowns, along with early, ad-free and extended YouTube videos. I colour grade my work using Dehancer. Use my code Rob Ellis to get 10% off. Parts 1, 2, 4 and 5 of my Lighting with Colour mini course are on YouTube now, but you can also download it all with an exclusive part 3 at my website. Or become a patron and stream the 46 minute tutorial in full. I use music from AudioSocket in my videos. Click my referral link in the video description and use the code Rob Ellis when you sign up for a free month of the best and most diverse range of stock music available. Use my code Rob Ellis over at Zyro to get up to 71% off your website or storefront with three extra months free along with a custom domain for a year.